everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Mike of Mike Likes. And today I thought I'd talk about how we get started in astronomy. There's a lot of different things you can buy. There's a lot of information on the internet and it's pretty overwhelming. So I figured I'd go through a few things. I get this question a lot and I'd love to show you what I do. So depending on what you want to start with, you think, I need this telescope. I need that telescope. No, you can actually start with your binoculars. If you have binoculars around the house, these are, you know, my binoculars, and they're great. You know, you point these to the sky, you'll see so many more stars and stuff than you'd ever see with just your, your uh, naked eyes. These are really, really great, and they're probably in your house already. They're not expensive. You can get a pair of binoculars for $35, $40. If you have a really nice pair of binoculars, they get into thousands, but you could start with any binoculars that you have, and I hugely recommend them. Um, they're a little bit awkward to use when you're looking up because it can get a little cricky on the neck, but they're really convenient if you're just solo viewing. And I say solo viewing because if you have a friend, a spouse with you, a child, when you're looking at the Orion Nebula and then you hand it to them, they're not going to know where to look. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So let's start off with telescopes. We'll start with the refractor. This is a refractor telescope, and basically this is what you know from childhood. When a pirate was on a ship with a telescope looking through the end, he was probably looking through a refractor. If you've ever been to a fancy home overlooking the ocean, they might have had a brass refractor there as part of the furniture. You gotta be careful with refractors. Some of them are known as hobby killers. They're just, you know, ridiculously high magnification. They have tiny little eyepieces and they're just really cheap, but they look expensive. Be careful. This is an Orion Short Tube 80. These cost just under $200 new, less than $100 used, and it's a really nice 3-inch refractor. This will give you great views of the moon and the solar system and some of the brighter deep sky objects. I really love this because I mount it on my Schmidt Cassegrain mount, and it gives me go-to automation. Now, it doesn't come with a mount, so you have to think about that. Anyone who's done astrophotography will tell you mounts cost more than the telescope a lot of the time, so you have to consider what kind of mount you're putting it on. A standard photo tripod is a good option, but if they're wobbly, that's really, really frustrating to use. So consider what kind of mount you're going to put it on, and you can't go wrong with a short tube 80. Okay, the Celestron 6SE. This is a completely computerized telescope. It does everything. It's got a nice 1500 millimeter focal length. It can do the moon, the planets. You can observe the sun if you put a filter on. You basically have to align it to two stars or three stars. So there is some setup involved. If you're good with computers and you love your iPhone or your Droid, you'll love this because you use this uh, 1990s uh, phone looking hand control and you point it to where it wants to go. But um, I also can control it with a Wi-Fi dongle and that way your phone or your tablet can point it. So really flexible. Um, obviously this is a six inch one. They go all the way up. They make an eight inch version. They make a nine, an 11, a 14 inch version. I would caution you, check out the six inch. The eight inch gets much more expensive really quickly. I think this is a great starter um, and it might be all you ever need. Um, a couple of things you have to know, um, Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes are like Barbie dolls. They have lots of accessories. There's dew shields and batteries and GPS receivers and Wi-Fi connectors and oh my goodness, there's, there's other kinds of bells and whistles on their mounts. So it adds up really quickly in Schmidt Cassegrain land. So just be mindful of what you want to buy and what your total investment is. I love this telescope though. It's very flexible to any observing, but there is a little bit of setup time involved. So keep that in mind. It's a great telescope to share with your friends and family because when you point this to the moon and align it, it's going to track the moon all night long. You're not going to have them say, ah, you said the moon was there, but I guess it slipped out of the eyepiece. No, this will keep the moon right there. It'll keep Saturn and Jupiter right there will keep the Orion Nebula right there. All it does is it tracks all night. And of course, this is the 8-inch uh, Dobsonian Reflector. Now this telescope, you can see, is a big boy. Uh, I'm 5 foot 7, and if you're uh, taller than me, this is actually not even that crazy. These get really uh, tall and big, depending on which one you want. This is the most common. This is the 8-inch uh, Reflector, and I love this telescope. Uh, this is the Intelliscope version, so as you'll see, it has a computerized hand controller where you can align it to two stars. Probably sounds familiar, but you don't have to do that. You could just observe this thing like normal and just look right through it, and you can point it to Jupiter or Saturn or the Moon with minimal setup if you want to. It can be as smart or as dumb, as we say affectionately, as you want it to be. Um, you know, this is just a base that does your, your azimuth heading and of course your altitude. This particular one has encoders installed so it knows how far you should point something to get to something in your eyepiece. Um, 
really these start around $400, they go up from there. There's a six inch version that's about the same size, it's just a little bit of a narrower tube, but the base is the same. You can see this would uh, store in a closet just fine. So it's not really that big a deal. A lot of people who've spent thousands of dollars on astrophotography setups, they keep one of these around just because they're that much fun to use. You'll see a lot of outreach groups with kids and schools and things like that. So yeah, these are the three types of telescopes that you can consider as a beginner. You've got your refractor, it's pure, it's organic, it's what telescopes were 100 years ago. You've got your schmidt cassegrain kind of the jack of all trades telescope, and you've got your Dobsonian reflector. These are beloved online. If you go to Cloudy Nights or Reddit, that's all they ever talk about is Dobsonians. Now, mind you, if you live on a fourth floor walk-up, I don't recommend this. This weighs about 42 pounds. You might go with something like this and keep parts of it in a backpack or even uh, a refractor. But, you know, keep in mind what works for you. I store these telescopes in my garage. Some people have to store them in a closet. It just depends. Uh, whatever you do, I wish you lots of fun. The most important thing in astronomy is to have fun. Get an astronomy playlist going. Invite your friends and family to do it. Um, it's just the best thing when you look up at the sky and you start to see what's up there. Um, so. If you like what I'm doing here, please throw a like on the video. You can subscribe. I'd love that. I try to upload videos weekly. Uh, I wish you well and have a great day. Thanks.